everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is the 13th race in season number one of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. We are here at the Daytona International Speedway for the Valvoline, uh, not 500, 400, so 24 lap race here at the Daytona International Speedway. And this is the first track that we are going to have our second race at. Yes, I do believe I said that right. Okay, so the second race ever at Daytona in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. We will be here a lot um, on this channel. This is a great track, the Speedway Physics version of Daytona. We always get great racing here and a lot of big ones. So let's get to the starting lineup. The winner of the last restrictor play track race, Aaron Luke, starts on the pole. Alongside him is Riley White. We got Adam Pinchon, Roger Carruff, Eric Powers, Cody Hagen, Caleb Hoffman, Christian Master, Justin Roberts, JJ Wording, Biff Crafton, Blaine Keyes, Zachary Fitzwater, LJ Mills, Cameron Gadew, Matt Dalio, Joffrey Toussaint, Aaron Walpole, Jacob Reed, the last winner, Warren Henniger in the number 27, Regan Whitlock, Jonathan Skivnicki, Cameron Garlington, Mason Powers, Alan Cavignaro, Jesse Turner, Trey Bartow, Garrett Sonor, Austin Spencer, Gabriel Marcio, Stuart Gratton, and Diego Stevenson. That seemed a little more than 32 for some reason, but I know that's 32. Anyway, let's get this one started. 24 laps here at the Daytona International Speedway for the Valvoline 400. And thank you to Matt Dalio for giving me that name uh, before my hiatus. Uh, and I'm going to keep that name as long as you're going to be following my series because you're a great fan of mine and uh, you definitely deserve to have this uh, race kind of, I guess you could say, na named after you. You're a big Valvoline fan, so... That's what we're going to do for this race uh, throughout the whole run of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, if it ever ends. Nobody's pulling out for engine failure, so that is a good thing. Don't normally get that here at Daytona, so that's a good thing. Anyway, you're coming in at turn number four, and the pace car is going to pull off to begin the Valvoline 400. Who's going to win and race their way into the chase? We've only got four races left until the chase cutoff. We will see. Who makes it in here today? Green flag is out for the Valvoline 400 here at Daytona. Already three wide back in the pack. Aaron Lukes pulls out to a pretty big lead, but here comes Adam Pinchon in the number six. Now, he is in desperate need of a win. He's actually going to be dumped by Cody Hagen. And a lot of those guys, a lot of those guys are going to be stuck uh, in that middle lane. And then they're going to come back down and help Pinchon. But how about Hagen? He's doing a good job in that number 24 in the middle. We're almost, all, we're almost already four wide. And we know that when we hit four wide here at Daytona, that we get crashes. I do believe Cody Hagen barely led that lap. Really intense racing here at Daytona for the Valvoline 400. Pinchon is going to pull out with help from Caleb Hoffman, who is the points leader, by the way. Caleb Hoffman in that number 13. Uh, so he, you know, if he just uh, does very good and consistent, he will make the chase on points because we had a double winner of Aaron Lukes in that five um, and that make uh, makes it so that the highest driver in points will make it into the chase no matter what. Adam Pinchon leads that lap in the number six. Hoffman trying to find a hole and get by the number six. And of course it is early here in this race and I would like to mention there are no pit stops here at the restrictor plate tracks of Daytona and Talladega. Hoffman pull out, if he can pull out, he can, it's not going to quite do it yet, it's been Aaron Lukes and Adam Pinchon out front, and we see this a lot more at Daytona than we do at Talladega, where both lanes generally race evenly, at Talladega, the inside lane is a better lane uh, than the outside lane, but here at Daytona, both lanes run generally even to, uh, with each other, and that, that allows for some very good racing, we're actually three wide, we got Three distinct lines right now, two out front for uh, one row, and then it's three wide from then on. Here comes Biff Crafton in the number 18. 
trying to get underneath of Pinchon and Lukes to take the lead. Now, Biff Crafton has already won this season. So has Aaron Lukes in the number five. Crafton won at Sonoma a couple days ago. And he's going to try to take the lead. Now, some guys here, there are quite a few guys uh, up front. Uh, who need a win. You got uh, guys like Aaron Walpole here in the 55, Adam Pinchon leading the middle lane, uh, Hoffman not really need, in need of a win, just need of a good finish and just keep that uh, good finish streak going and he'll be okay. Uh, guys like Riley White's in there, Cody Hagen, and Jonathan Skivnicki. A lot of those guys do not have wins yet this season and with only four races to go, including this one until the chase cutoff point, uh, until the regular season ends, I should say. Uh, uh, we really need a win if you want to make the chase. Probably with the exception of Caleb Hoffman. As long as he just gets good finishes, he'll be in the chase uh, from being the points leader. Walpole leads that lap, and we are now on lap number 6 of 24 here at Daytona. 3x3 three three as far as the eye can see here at Daytona International Speedway. But uh, we know for sure that eventually one guy is going to peek out, go four wide, and they're all going to go kabloom. Or kablam. I don't know. Which one is it? Wapol. And how about Aaron Luke? He's actually been out front in, a, in a, um, a line this whole race. He started on pole, and he's still, you know, not really out front. He hasn't led any laps, I don't believe, in this race. But he has led that outside lane pretty much the whole time. And uh, it is definitely one of those races where all the lanes are just pretty much equal uh, to each other. And a lot of these guys here, uh, like Pinchon, he, he has been up here quite a while, out front in the lead. Here comes Warren Henniger in the number 27, the winner of the last race. Now, the last time we were at a restricted play track race, guy who won the race before ended up winning the next race the restricted play track race of course we're gonna go four wide or they're they were gonna be they were close to doing four wide I should say Walpole leads this lap and we are having really good intense racing here at Daytona uh, so the last time I was gonna say the last time we went to a restricted play track race the winner won the race before as well Warren Henniger won the last race and he's now out front and here's a good story Jonathan Skevnicki has not really ever gotten a good finish uh, so far this season and out of all the races I've done you know going back uh, to last year and all that of course races that don't exist has a very very long losing streak he takes the lead from Warren Henniger here on lap number eight and we might see our four wide here no they're gonna be able to pull it off but I do believe we Almost had four wide in the back. Here comes Cameron Garlington in the number 10 and Cavignaro in the 11. Cavignaro is a driver that's really in need of the win. The 10, the 11, and the 31 all need wins uh, if they want to make the chase. Garlington. Three wide for the lead underneath of Skivnicki and Henniger. Teammates, by the way. Now, I can never really... This is just an interesting story for me. Hold on. Okay, we're not going to go four wide. Uh, but it's really hard for me to picture um, Ryan Newman and Paul Menard as teammates. It's still very hard for me to just see that, uh, being teammates at Richard Schuller's Racing. I just can't grasp it. I mean, you know, Paul Menard is almost in a totally different ballpark from the rest of NASCAR, in my opinion. Just for some reason. Uh-oh. Enough about that lousy story. They're coming close to going four wide. And the 31 and the 27, the Richard Childers teammates. Oh, we got four wide back in the pack. The Daytona 500 winner and J.J. Wording in this. We will follow it. I don't think they're going to be able to make it. This is uh, deep in the pack, though. So if they do crash, oh, boy, oh, boy. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it, and there they go. Hold on. Okay, I am very, very sorry about that. Right in the middle of crash. Okay, Jesse Turner, JJ Wording all torn up here. Christian Master, I think he had a little bit of a wall ride there, and it is only a three-car crash. So let's get the race back to the line. How about Trey Barto in the number four? 
Trying to hold off Cavignar on the 11. And Zenor. Boy, they're all over the place, but Barto wins the race back to the line. So, let's see what happened here to bring out the first caution of the Valvoline 400. So, you got this four wide going on here. Jesse Turner and JJ Wording. And you just know they're not going to get it right there. And boy, hard impact for Christian Master in the 14. Hard impact for JJ Wording, too. And the Daytona 500 winner is not going to sweep Daytona, unfortunately. And uh, he's going to be out for the rest of the race, probably because of that damage there. And then, JJ Wording in the 51. This was only a three car crash. Oh, man. <coughs> we'll go on board here with. I uh, guess we'll go on board with JJ Wording. Right there, hard impact uh, on JJ Wording there and uh, Jesse Turner, the Daytona 500 winner here earlier, just not going to be able to win it again. But he is in the chase, and so is JJ Wording. But uh, Christian Master is not, and now he only has three more races to get a win if he wants to make the chase. And the race back to the line, they were all over the place, uh, all, all, all over the place, moving around and all that. And Bartow wins it back. So, as I said, no pit stop, so we're just going to get right to the restart here. With Barto out front, Cavignaro, Sid Noor, Garlington, and Mauricio. Then Skivnicki, Hanniger, Gratton, Walpole, and Crafton, the top ten. Stevenson, Lukes, Dalio, Pinchon, Hagen, Mills, Hoffman, White, Powers, Justin Roberts, Roger Carruth, Cameron Gadew, Zachary Fitzwater, Regan Whitlock, Eric Powers, Joffrey Toussaint, Jacob Reed, Blaine Keys, and Austin Spencer. All the cars still out on the track. They're all uh, pretty clean cars. And I think we'll have a 29 car pack here to finish this one out. Of course, we could have another crash. Of course, that crash. You know, it would be neat if that crash happened up front near the end of the race. That would make things very interesting. A lot of the caution laps here. That's unfortunately going to uh, shorten the uh, length of the event here. And uh, here we go. We're over halfway through this race, and these races just seem to be getting shorter and shorter now. Myrtle Beach was only 23 or so minutes long yesterday, and this one, we're 13 minutes and 9 laps to go. So that's pretty interesting. But here we go. 9 laps to determine who wins the Valvoline 400 here at Daytona. And to see who makes it into the chase. Give Nikki the first car that peels out. He's going to have uh, help with Stuart Gratton. And as these cars get up to speed, we will see a pretty big pack. These cars, you know, they kind of dangle along back here, but then they all close back in. So Trey Barto is still the leader in the number four. And Alan Cavignar right behind him. Here comes Garlington in the 10, looking for second underneath the 11. And Skevnicki in the 31, uh, battling with Sidnor for fourth. Trey Barto leads that lap, the winner at Pocono earlier this season. The guys back here. They still haven't formed up yet, but eventually they will catch to this big pack here. All right, this is what I love about restricted play track racing. You never know what's going to happen when you get this big pack at a finish. We didn't really have that at, a, uh, at the Daytona 500, and uh, we sort of didn't have that at uh, Talladega because what happened was a lap car uh, came and ruined it all, but we don't have any lapped cars on the field. Everybody's on the lead lap, and everybody uh, is pretty clean, no damage on their car, so they're able to go uh, full speed. Garlington going for the lead underneath of Trey Bardo. He's got Skimnicki and Gratton right behind him. Here comes Jonathan Skivnicki in the 31. 
Leading an inside lane, a middle lane is starting to form with Garlington in the middle. Some might dip down from the outside lane to help uh, come join him. And we'll see. Jonathan Skivnicki is going to lead this lap. Most likely, at least. And he will. Here comes Stuart Gratton in the 34. I don't really care about the NBA Development League. Thank you very much. Stuart Gratton. I don't know why I have that app. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, Stuart Gratton looking to take the lead from Skivnicki here down the backstretch. Six to go. Actually, five and a half laps to go here at Daytona. And you can tell it's five and a half, la half, five and a half laps to go here at Daytona because they are all over the place looking to get up front. Stuart Gratton leads this lap. Here comes Biff Crafton and LJ Mills in the 41. And this is a good opportunity for some guys who have not really been seen that much this season, kind of like what happened with Biff Crafton uh, at Sonoma. Uh, of course, he's uh, easily being seen in this race. He is taking the lead from Stuart Gratton, but it's good for guys like LJ Mills. We haven't really seen much of LJ Mills this season in that 41. And we might not see much of anyone because we're going four wide. This may be it. This isn't the first time Biff Crafton's been in a situation like this. Riding around and it's going to be the big one. Cars all over the place. That's going to end the race. And LJ Mills was out front. I think LJ Mills was out front. Yes, he was. LJ Mills in the 41 as they went four wide. The big one. It was just like the big one we had earlier at, at the in the Daytona 500. Nobody really had any hard hits or anything. Just a bunch of guys went spinning. Skiv Nicky with a lot of damage. That's definitely not what he wanted to see. Stuart Gratton. Trey Barto. Hoffman might not get a good finish here. Roger Carruth in the number 17 with some damage. Henniger all bent in, and so is Fitzwater. But how about that? L.J. Mills in the number 41 takes the lead. Once uh, He actually caused the, to go four wide, and he was able to take the lead, and this one's probably going to end under caution. The lights would have to go out next time by, and I don't see that happening. So a lot of green flag racing was taken away uh, today with two cautions in this race. And uh, it's going to end with LJ Mills winning. And he takes the white flag under yellow. And here he comes off of turn number four. LJ Mills in the number 41 is going to win here at Daytona. He wins the Valvoline 400, and he makes his way into the Chick-fil-A Cup Series chase, and he will race for a championship. And a good win for LJ Mills in the number 41. He wins it here at Daytona. So that was one of the shortest. This was the shortest race in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series so far. The shortest race in history of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, uh, time-wise. But uh, anyway, LJ Mills... Is going to get the win, and he is in the chase for the Chick-fil-A Cup. So, uh, Biff Crafton, Riley White, Cameron Garlington, and Alan Cavignar are round out the top five. We'll take a look at the rest of the guys back here. Uh, Eric Powers, Christian Master, J.J. Wording, and Jesse Turner. Actually, the bottom three, they were all involved in that first crash, and we had that second crash that knocked out the 31, the 17, the 34, and the 2 uh, for the race. And L.J. Mills led one green flag lap, and that was all he needed to win the race here at Daytona. So thank you guys very much for watching, and here are the points for the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. <laughs>